Uh, on the question of Professor Dershowitz, uh, for me, it's, it's a curiosity about politics. I don't know the characters on the Canadian national stage. But every country has its characters in a kind of national theater. So in the case of France, they have a, a guy named uh, BHL, Bernard Henri Lenny. How many people have heard of him? He calls himself a philosopher. Uh, and the French call him a philosopher. And he's a kind of buffoonish character. And he's constantly exposed as a fraud and a fake. And it makes no difference. Because once you become a character on the national stage, facts become absolutely irrelevant. You're just an interesting personality. And Professor Dershowitz on the American national stage, he has that same, he occupies that same position. He's a character on the stage. So you go to him and you ask his opinion on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Now everybody knows that Professor Dershowitz hasn't a clue what's going on there, has probably, probably never read a single book on the topic, including his own. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they don't care. And that's an interesting insight because it actually makes you very despairing of human culture that there's such a complete and total contempt for the most basic and elementary principles of truth. That it's a kind of in-group. They all know that each of them is lying, and nobody cares. Uh, it's a, for those of you who have not yet been initiated into those ways, it's a very smarmy, sleazy, greasy experience. When I was asked to debate Professor Dershowitz, or when it came to pass that I debated Professor Dershowitz, uh, I was really, and I know people will not believe me, I was really kind of shocked at his facility, his capacity to just brazenly lie. It did surprise me. I didn't know it really did. Because he has this remarkable capacity. Some of you have heard the expression of pathological liar. How many heard that expression? <laughs> well, everybody throws around the expression. I never quite knew what it meant. But then I actually, and I don't, I'm not really trying to be insulting. I really am not. It was to me an interesting sight to observe because Professor Dershowitz is able simultaneously to believe every word he's saying. He does. He believes every word he's saying. And simultaneously, he knows that every single word he's saying is a lie. It notes a very remarkable ability. And that's why he's such an excellent defense lawyer. Because he goes before the jury and he has to convey the fact that he really believes that this client did murder X, Y, and Z, even though it's right there on Facebook. His client is shooting the gun at the victim. But Professor Dershowitz, I really believe. He didn't kill that person. But at the same time, his mind has to anticipate everything that the prosecution is about to say. So his mind has to be very clear about the fact that, oh yes, he killed that person, and I better know how to answer every argument of the prosecution. And he's able to do both at the same time believe every word, and know every word is a lie. It's a remarkable thing to observe. I was kind of shocked uh, when I was debating Professor Dershowitz. The first hour passed, and then we thought it was over. But uh, Amy Goodman asked him if he would stay for another hour, and he agreed. And 
about halfway through the second hour, which I understand is also posted on the web, you'll notice, looking at the camera, that I'm no longer wearing the earphones. Because about a second half through the hour, I said, I'm not staying with this guy. He's just disgusting. I, I, can't, I don't want to be around him. My, my skin is crawling. So I took the, I took the, my, uh, the earphones, I flung them off, and I said, I'm leaving. Well, Amy said, get back in that seat. <laughs> you know, I'm arguing with Amy Goodman. So, okay, I went back. But it was a very, if I can use the word, it was a very creepy feeling <laughs> in his presence. 